Good evening, everybody. Welcome to episode two of the Elder Scrolls Online. When we had last finished up, we were just pretty much going through the tutorial section of the game, and now we are in the, uh, the main game proper. Now, one of the first things we can do is, uh, you see this little icon here, once we get to a town where we can break stuff, this will actually give us more experience towards um, uh, the different crafting trees, in this case, jewelry crafting. And we also have this, which we didn't open. That gives us a soul gem. You use those to re-enchant items and to revive yourself if you get killed. Also can get a couple of gear pieces. Um, is any of these? We're generally going to want to stick to light armor. And these are all medium. Although I will take this. And we can just destroy this one because like I said it has no value until a certain point basically and uh yeah that will be good for that now since we've started the game proper um we have this whole map this is the uh, to my knowledge the most recent dlc and we have pretty much this entire island to go through and you can see we have quests marked on the map I have a couple of mods that sort of tell me where to find these things, just because otherwise trying to find everything in an MMO is kind of a pain in the butt. So we're going to go here first because it's nearby, and then I think the game wants me to start making our way down here, so we might as well follow along with what the game wants for the time being. And one of my uh, things is a mini-map, which you can not see because my face is in the way. <laughs> but it's fine, it's, you know, the same map you were looking at before. Just smaller, so that I can get a quick glance at it. It's another player there, but nobody we need to worry about. You'll see these little icons on the screen? Pretty much if I've been to the zone as any character, and I've looted something... These little icons will appear like this was previously uh, a water bag or something along those lines, which brings up that icon. Um, that gives me a heavy bag icon. Um, this is a, I think it's like what would be jute early on and then later it's other stuff. Yeah, here's jute right now. Jute's sort of like the first level um, cloth crafting equipment. Now, these are um, bait to get um, fishing done. I'm going to grab them just to destroy them, just because if I don't, the next person that tries to loot that is just going to get bait and they'll be pissed off. And I'm not a dick, so I try to avoid that if I have the inventory space to justify it. Now, we got a fi pirate's treasure in a bottle here, or a note in a bottle, rather. Lucky adventurer. Our chances are non-existent. The blue Huamasu outpowers us and we're riding low in the water. I refuse to let my treasure fall into their hands. I leave that honor to you. Across the harbor from Leowin lies a waterfall. Follow the water to its source. Progress 90 paces southwards from the spring. An old fortress I once had the honor to raise to its foundations waits for you. Dig by the base of the tree that stands on the northeasternmost corner. Happy hunting, my friend. Whatever happens, make sure the world never forgets your name. Voldar, Terror of the Topol Bay. So some pirate, you know, buried a treasure, as you would expect pirates to do. And we have clues of how to uh, access it. But uh, I think, yeah, that's way over here, so we'll get to it when we get to it. You get a, a decent amount of slots open for treasure and everything. And uh, questing and all that stuff. So you, you can grab a bunch of stuff and then come back to it later. Now early on it probably doesn't matter too much grabbing these ingredients. But eventually we're going to want to be somewhat hesitant to pick up those things. Because your inventory fills up fast and... You know, if you're always full of cooking materials you can't use, 
then you won't be able to pick up anything else. And these are just, you know, random little lore books. You can read them if you want, but they're not really that important. I suppose I can read it just because it's a shiny one. It's a little harder to do inside dungeons where stuff can respawn. But this is basically just giving you lore about um, the Ivory Brigade, which I believe is like the police of Leowin and more or less, you know, their mercenary, mercenary group. But we'll read it just because it's the first book. On the Ivory Brigade by Tamian Leviticus, Chief Counselor and Member of the Chamber of Legates. Of all the timeless lessons one might learn from a study of statecraft, perhaps none as lasting or inflexible as this. Those who hope for peace must keep themselves ready for war. While there are dangers in courting rivalries with neighboring states or succumbing to the temptation to resolve problems by force, it is far better to deter your enemies with a show of strength. And should deterrence fall, then the leader who has prepared for the worst will be much more ready to defend the realm than one who has neglected his duty. Regrettably, Leowin now finds itself in this age-old predicament. We can no longer look to Cyrodiil's legions for our defense. The Empire's collapse has left us, left us an independent city-state surrounded by potential adversaries. While we have reiterated our neutrality in the Three Banners War many times, I fear that it's only a matter of time before one of the Great Alliances takes note of the two dangerous facts. Blackwood is rich and unspoiled, and Leowin's position astride the mouth of Nibin River makes it a prize to immense strategic value. Whoever controls Leowin can send a fleet from any port in Tamriel straight to the Imperial City, deciding the contest for the Ruby Throne with one bold stroke. And if neither Joran, Emmerich, or Arian are inclined to violate our neutrality, can they take the chance that their rivals won't? It seems likely to me that any of them might attempt to seize Leowin simply to keep it out of the other's hands. Probably should have poured a drink before I started playing this. <laughs> Given these facts, there is only one way to prevent the Three Banners War from spilling into Blackwood. Leowin must raise a strong army of its own and do so immediately. That may seem like a ruinously expensive proposition, but I have given the matter some thought, and I believe we do not need a force that can outright defeat a consorted attack by one of the Great Alliances. All we need to do is present enough of a defense that none of the Alliances can count on seizing Leowin without sustaining losses that would fatally weaken them against their rivals. For that purpose, we do not need a full, full, a full legion of troops, a single reinforced brigade, well armed and well trained should suffice in the long term. Captain Ryan Lior, formerly of the Imperial Legion, has suggested the name the Ivory Brigade, in honor of the white horse that graces Leowin's emblem. I intend to put it before the Chamber of Legates at our next meeting. Debating names may seem like a pointless, pointless exercise, but names have the power to inspire, to motivate, to make a mere concept into something real. Of course, the best name in the world means little without soldiers to carry it. Here the Empire's troubles work to our advantage. Many Imperial legionaries stationed in Blackwood have received neither pay nor orders from Cyrodiil in months. The units have been effectively disbanded. I propose that we actively recruit those stranded legionaries to our cause by offering to make good on their back pay and confirming their role as protectors of this providence. Hundreds of experienced Imperial legionaries would represent an excellent beginning for the sort of fighting force Leowin must build. Around this rock-solid core of Imperial veterans, we can muster a force of local militia, native Blackwooders willing and able to fight for their homes. From their more experienced comrades, the militia can le learn military discipline and Imperial fighting skills. And unless I am mistaken, our local militia should provide our veterans with inval invaluable knowledge of the terrain, people, and conditions of Blackwood. These are dangerous times, but I'm confident that with the right sort of leadership and the support of the Legates, our Ivory Brigade will prove equal to the test. So yeah, just a little lore bits. Right. All the dogs have a name, which is neat. Incidentally, even though it's um Elder Scrolls game, nothing counts as stealing unless you steal it directly from somebody's body. It's not like any of the other Elder Scrolls where, you know, just 
going into somebody's cabinets will piss them off. As long as you're not stealing off of their body, they don't care. So she's just an innkeeper, which I think is just a shop. I think you'll be seeing more Bandari out of this way, but they seem to be avoiding something for now. Now what'll it be? Buying or selling, or you need a room? Right now, it's only going to be useful for repairing. Um, I don't think there's anything. Oh, I guess we got a couple of these. We'll ditch them because they're just selling fodder, basically. Um, I'm going to use that so I can get rid of those just for a couple extra coins. Speaking of, let's use this to get an experience boost. Oh, apparently we already have one. But we don't have a food item done, so we'll use that. What's funny is, like, they don't even care about you stealing, like, their coins that are sitting out on the cabinet or any, any of that. Like, you can steal whatever you want. Nobody cares. You can steal their own stuff and sell it right back to them. <laughs> Which is, uh, it's neat, you know? It's perhaps not the most realistic thing in the world, especially compared to, like, what you run into with the other um, Elder Scrolls games, but it's neat that you can do it. Granted, you know, there, there's something amusing about, you know, going into an area and having to stealth around and steal stuff, which you can still do that. Some areas it's considered stealing. This lady don't care. But I, I think, if I remember right, an item will be marked in red if it's considered stealing. And generally it's only in cities. Who's this? These cheeky, These cheeky creatures, creatures think I can't tell them apart, but I know who's eating. Can't let one of them hog all the food, not when they're so excited about the treasure they are stuck in that new hiding place of theirs. Tell me about this squirrel's treasure. I knew that would get your attention. I'm not the sort of woman who would lie to you now. Oh, I, I'm, ugh, I'm not the sort of woman who would lie to you now. Can't tell you where it is, not with those little ones running around. They don't want it to be too easy for you. I can give you a hint, though. Is there a landmark? There's a rock nearby. Look, I never said the hints would be helpful. Why are you sharing this with me? I'm tired, tired of the squirrel's annoying chatter. chatter. Still, these little creatures have been my loyal companions for a long time. I'd like to see someone else grow to respect their usefulness like I have. There's a rock nearby. Great. Can we get anything else out of you? No. I don't think that marks anything on the map. No. <laughs> okay, well, if we see a rock, we'll uh, keep an eye out for it. I don't know if that's hinting you to where a treasure chest can spawn, or what the go is. Sigic Apprentice, why couldn't you try to kill someone else? Where is that? But sometimes just random stuff spawns in. And there can be fights and other events that can take place. A lot of me looting these things is mostly just to mark it on the map as that's a place we can loot things. Soiled tapestry th threads. Oh. So to do leads, you need to go to Skyrim and get, um, I think it's called scrying. So we can't do that, but I mean, you unlock a lead, you can come back later to do it. So it's... Not the worst idea in the world to grab things if you see them.
I'm assuming you are a merchant. The Nebis and Argonians might claim these lands, but by the blessings of the moons, only the Khajiit can truly live upon the soil. With those same blessings, shall we haggle over prices? I don't think I really have much to sell him aside from those random things we picked up. But go for it, my man. Some of these things I might end up selling. What What is my race? Are we High Elf or Bosmer? High Elf, okay. I don't need the crafting bits for other races until I get a book that teaches me how to make their stuff, so anything that's not our race can pretty much just be sold off or trashed. Which, if you haven't noticed just from seeing things pop up, every piece of equipment has a style, basically, and their style determines, like, what race made them, more or less. So, like, Khajiit equipment will look different from Red Guard equipment and so on and so forth. And you need special parts to basically make the one that you want. Now we're going to go for that um, Sky Shard in a minute. I just want to grab this while I see it. So if you see a glowing quest icon like that, that means it's a quest you haven't picked up yet. Oh, hello. Can you come over here and help Now, I'm not going to read too many of those just because they take too long whereas you know they're not i mean they're extra bits of lore but they're not important to what you're doing at the time you look like a hearty soul unconcerned with the prospect of death by trick trap or misadventure how do you feel about helping a defenseless scholar from gideon unearth a little history from undertow cavern oh and can you swim what do you need have you heard of Favalon the Magnificent? He was a famous Nebensi? Nebins? Minotaur hunter. But his final resting place was lost to time. After years of searching, I think I finally found the site of Favalon's mausoleum. Why do you need my help? I hope to recover proof that this is Favalon's tomb. His armor, helm, and sword would do nicely. But I didn't get far before I flooded the cavern, or I found the cavern overrun with goblins and minotaurs, and parts of it are flooded. I'll pay you out to help me. I'll be searched the cavern. No one in Leowin realizes the Undertow Cavern is the final resting place of a great hero. Let me secure my belongings and I'll make you inside. I'm gonna grab the bull by the horns and wade right in. Ha <laughs> ha! Why do you think this is where Favalon is buried? I found accounts of Favalon's burial in a shining mausoleum on a hill outside Leowin. He was laid to rest with his arms and armor, relics of his many victories. This is the place, but goblins infest the caverns and minotaurs too. I'm curious about these relics you were after. You would be, I suppose. Well, Favalon the Magnificent had a golden helm. He wore armor of imperious mail, and he wielded a sword of exceptional sharpness. Tell me about his armor. The stories say that Favalon had the most beautiful mail, impervious to sword, arrow, and spear. We don't know much about his armor of his era, but he was known as the Magnificent. I can only surmise his armor was quite splendid. You said Favalon had a really sharp sword? Favalon's sword was so sharp it was said to be able to cut the air itself. Now that isn't right. I suppose any sword will cut air. Now that's it. This one could cut through armor like air. That's what it was told. Oh, that's what I was told, rather. What can you tell me about Favalon's helm? As I understand it, the helm was a gift from the Lord of Leowin in gratitude for Favalon's many heroic deeds in Blackwood. The stories say it was fashioned in the shape of a roaring dragon's face. Is it possible the details have been exaggerated over time? Well, it has been many hundreds of years. I suppose Favalon's arms and armor might not be much to look at now. But in any condition, they would be of immense historical value. I simply know it. You mentioned goblins and minotaurs? 
I suppose goblins aren't much of a surprise. They infest many caves in this region. Although I'd hoped I wouldn't run into any. The minotaurs I didn't expect. None have been seen so close to Leowen in centuries. So where did these minotaurs come from? That's the very question I was wondering about. Wherever they came from, these minotaurs seem very hostile, enraged even. I've heard all kinds of fighting inside. I think they're angry at the goblins. Do minotaurs and goblins get along? I don't see a shining mausoleum here. That's because it was swallowed by the earth. One night 700 years ago, people living nearby heard a terrible sound. When they came to look in the morning, they found the whole mausoleum had fallen into the caves underneath the hill. Why did the Nabense build a mausoleum here? Because the caves underneath this hill were the site of Favalon's last and greatest battle. The mausoleum was a monument to his victory as well as his tomb. Until Undertow Cavern swallowed it up anyway. I didn't mean to talk to you. <laughs> so I think this is the first example of stealing. Nope, not yet. Okay. Well, it's higher armor, but it doesn't have the extra bonus effect, so I'm going to ignore that for now. So Adelve is kind of like... Um, it's not necessarily a group dungeon, but... There is going to be a boss at the end, which... You can beat solo, but it's going to be tougher than the average enemy. Typically, it's nothing you have to worry about too much. Just the sort of place goblins love. Darksome, dank, and foul. I don't need that. I really should stop grabbing the food stuff. It's just force of habit. Um, let's go up here and loop around. I gotta remember, my uh, levels are kind of low at the moment. Okay, I can't interact with that. Gonna help this person because why not? That's kind of one annoying part about this being an MMO, is you do have to deal with um, other people being around, stealing the stuff you would try to be killing. Okay, Flame Skull can now be marked. Do I have any skill points? No, I don't. We'll look into that uh, when I get a chance then. So here we are, we got the first piece of equipment. Favalon's magnificent armor. His armor, His armor shone, shone by the light, light of the moons or sun. It's just, it's just too bad Minotaurs are enraged by shiny objects. Well, that didn't take long for the uh, dungeon damage dealer to come out. Um, you know what, we'll go down here, because I assume she's going to go the other way. I don't want to be just hovering around her the whole time. But I do want the opportunity to kill things on my own. Mainly killing these guys because obviously they can drop gear, but the other thing is they drop um, a alchemy ingredient with pretty decent regu regularity. Well, it looks like she's following me rather than going the other way. Okay, that sight skill's pretty decent. Seems like cycling between those has some worth. What am I wearing that's medium? Oh, I must be wearing one of each. Oh, wait, that's not that other player. That's the NPC following me. Can 
I can just picture this sword cleaving savage minotaurs. A pity it's dull beyond use now. Okay, that is an enchanting thing. Um, you know what? Well, I might as well add that to something, because why not? Nah, minimum level one. Now well, this will work. I mean... It, oh, jewelry, okay. That only works on a piece of jewelry. Which I don't believe I have any unenchanted jewelry, so... Somewhat irrelevant to me at the moment. When I get the chance, I'll sort of show off how um, enchanting works. Thought it's something I'd grab my attention, but not the case. All right, level up. And that gives our racial skill line and some um, health rings, which will be good. I don't believe we have rings. I'm not going to use the skill points just yet, though. I would prefer to look at things when I am somewhere safe. I will put these on, though, just to boost my HP. I'm sure there's stuff in the racial line we will want, as well as uh, some of the other weapon and special skill lines. Here we have the helm. Imagine how many times this helped save the heroic Fablon's head, except the last time, obviously. I'm going to stop looting food items. At least till I know what I can make with this character and what I can't. You want to talk to me, so let's do it over here where it's safe. Hmm. hmm. The armor, helm, and sword are all badly damaged. Skeptics might say these could have been these could have belonged to anybody. We need to find Favalon's horn of magnificence to settle the settle the question for good. But where is the horn, and why is it here? Why isn't it here, rather? I didn't say anything about a horn before. Favalon's horn of magnificence was his greatest treasure. My grandmother told me he made it from the horn of a Minotaur Lord. It had a brass cap inscribed with an intricate design. When Favalon blew it, echoes rang from the hills for seven days. Your grandmother told you about Favalon? I thought you were a scholar. I am, mostly. But yes, I have a personal stake in this. Favalon is his distant ancestor. I grew up on his stories of his battles, his magic horn. Or could this be about the horn? What about the horn? Grandmother told me that the horn's note drove minotaurs mad with fear with ra fear and rage. But sometimes the horn called minotaurs to battle even when no one sounded it. Maybe the minotaurs are here because of the horn of magnificence. Are you sure your grandmother wasn't just making up a story? Oh, I wondered about that too. House Vera mostly died out long ago. But they were certainly real enough. We can trace a relationship to Favalon's line on my mother's side. There's truth to my grandmother's tales, I'm certain of it. Does anybody else believe your grandmother's stories? No. No one outside my family remembers Favalon. Almost all of his histories that recorded his deeds have been lost. Even his mausoleum vanished. But now I'm close to the proof that Favalon really existed and was a great hero. Alright. So, next stop is we want to get that um, Sky Shard. Now, for Delves. Even though there's typically a quest in the Delve, it does not count as finishing the Delve unless you beat the boss at the end of it. And what I mean by that is, um, basically, 
it won't show up as white filled in on the map unless you've done everything that can be done inside of it. Although I think to make it appear white, all you have to do is um, just basically do the um, the boss itself. Like it, it doesn't force you to do the quest if you don't want to. But I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't do the quest. It's free experience, free items. You know, there's no real downside. The only reason I could potentially see you holding off is because you want to save them for after you hit level 50 so you can use them to boost up your champion um, rankings and whatnot, but honestly there's enough content in the game you probably don't need to. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Avalon's horn! I believe the Sky Shard is on the upper floor here. We will need to go to the lower floor to uh, finish out the area. Here we are. This is also a relatively safe place, so let's take a look at our skills. So we got two skill points. Probably won't be able to do too much with crafting trees right now. Racial skills. Um, Highborn increases experience gain with the destruction staff skill line by 15%. And overall experience gain by 1%. Um, when you activate an ability, you restore 200 Magicka stamina based on whichever is lowest. This effect can occur once every 6 seconds. When you are using an ability with a channel or a cast time, you take 0% less damage. What an upgrade. Alright, so like, basically, when you could, you get a chance to morph every skill. And if I click on this, I can choose between two options. Typically, you choose between a stamina version and a magicka version. Each with their own um, different effects. I'm going to move this one because, this, this, yeah, this one sacrifices power. I'll leave it on just for the sake of having something on there, but I don't think I'll use it much. Yeah, this one costs 2,000 health too, so I don't think I'll use that much either. This can be potentially useful, though. I know we have bonus experience for the these things, so you know what? Let's grab this. Passive abilities, you know, they're always on. So while we have the fire staff, we'll do 6% more damage. That works for me. I need to have this still in the thing to level it, unfortunately. So it might not be worth grabbing this right now. Um, with that in mind, can I? I can do this one. We're going to go Magicka, so gain a heal over time. That's going to be useful, so I'll grab that. That will at least give us some degree of a heal as we're going through these fights. Which will be very helpful when we get to the boss of the area. Because a lot of those fights 
sort of depend on your ability to patch yourself up mid-fight. In fact, I would say a good chunk of the game pretty much is based around your ability to drain health and get your HP back up in a pinch. I think you are the boss Minotaur, but you are a higher than normal enemy, so this will be a good chance to see how our healing and damage goes. It looks like we do a decent amount of damage. Although the fact he helped out kind of made that harder to tell. Yeah, he's not following me. I thought he might have been coming out here looking for help with this. I heard the, I heard the horn in this chamber. chamber, but who sounded it? Who sounded it? And here we have Jukaba the Smasher, which is the boss of this zone. Basically, if you remember from the tutorial, a lot of this sort of depends on dodging the right attacks, um, you know, blocking at the right time, which sometimes with some enemies it's a little difficult to tell what the hell's happening. <laughs> Especially when there's more than one enemy active at any given time. Get rid of you. my scythe to get some of my health back. We should be able to kill this guy without too much of a problem. Alright, there we go. Completed Undertow Cavern. That gives us the Deadlands Assassin's Boots. Which we won't wear because they're not heavy. Because we do generally want to keep, you know, what we're already actively going for. And there is a reason you want to keep other equipment too, so... Nothing's going to go to waste necessarily. Horn. Babylon's Horn, Babylon's just as the story's described it. Did this goblin salmon note we heard? Right, now I just gotta exit out. You don't always get an achievement when you finish a del, but usually it's a good sign. Looks like we can get out through here if you don't mind getting a little wet. You probably noticed um, some of the added bonuses on certain equipment. I'll explain in a second, but first let's talk to you. Finally, Finally proof of Favalon's legend. I'll be the talk of the Gideon once I bring these trophies home. And yet, I wonder, did the goblins here cause their own troubles by meddling with Favalon's horn? Or is it dangerous to just keep around? I want to take them back to Gideon and prove once and for all that my family story is true. Fame, fortune, festivities await. But if these relics, especially the Horn of Magnificence, are dangerous, perhaps I shouldn't bring them home. So you get a different reward. Generally, when you have two paths in a quest, you get a different reward based on which one you get. And like One might give you a staff, the other one might give you an axe. I don't know which one is which, so we're just going to tell her to destroy the horn, because, you know, if that's going to summon minotaurs, you probably don't want that at your house. You're right, of, You're right, of course. I 
I will destroy the horn before its curse brings about a real tragedy. Patience, prudence, persipis... what? Perspicity? Never heard that word in my life. That's what I should learn from Fabulon. He pushed his luck once too often. Wise choice. We may be bruised, battered, and wet, but we are successful. Even without Favlon's Horn of Magnificence, the other relics have a great story to tell. Thank you. Oh, I shouldn't forget your pay. Come visit me and Gideon sometime. Well, that gives us a meat cleaver, two-handed axe. Nothing we're going to use, but um, we'll grab it. Because you got to do it to finish the quest anyway, but there's another reason I'll go over in a second. Hope to see you again sometime, although I must confess, now that I've finally found evidence supporting the legend of Favalon, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do next. Find a new mystery to unravel, and make sure to destroy that horn. I shall. I shall. Prudence is my watchword. Good luck with your future adventures. I have spent years chasing the ghost of a great hero, but it is an honor to have met one in person. Alright. That puts us roughly where we wanted to be anyway, so let's just get back over to the road. And we can continue making our way towards the main city. But before we go into the main city, just to go over this, so you'll see that on the piece of equipment, there's the enchantment. That's like one of those gems I try to put on. But under that, you see what's decisive. Pretty much, you can break that down at a crafting table, in this case at a blacksmithing table, to learn the decisive feature for axes. And then whenever you make an axe afterwards, you can add that with a special item. So you can just make decisive. But to learn how to do that, you have to break down another piece of equipment. They'll go into more details later, but it's, it's an interesting system that sometimes the sheer amount that you have to do often gets in the way, because you're always holding on to equipment, which combined with the fact that you're already limited space with, um, you know, all, all the crafting pieces and all that stuff, it, it bogs you down very quickly. And you have two solutions for that. The first one is obviously selective looting. The second one is that if you do subscribe to the game's ESO Plus plan, you can get a crafting bag, which I think I can even, yeah, craft bag lock, ESO Plus. And that puts every crafting equipment inside of it automatically that doesn't go into your inventory. Um... And when you run out of um, ESO+, Plus, it doesn't remove it. You can take stuff out manually, but you can't add more stuff in until you resub. It's definitely worth having. That more so than the other bonuses, which ESO+, Plus generally you get all the DLCs for free while you're subscribed. And you get crowns, which is like their store money. You get a thousand a month, I think. But really, if you're doing it, you're doing it for the crafting bag. You know the crest of Leowin is a rampant steed. Puts a lot of pressure on a stable master like me, but I think I'm doing alright. So these, um, I can afford to do- oh. No, no, I can. So once I have a mount, which I already have one, I just haven't activated it yet, I can use this to increase the speed of the mount, any mount I'm using. Increase the stamina of the mount, and most importantly, increase the carrying capacity, not of the mount of you. So first of all, let me go into here, and we gotta go to, uh, where is it, collections, I believe? If we go under mounts, I've got a couple of them just from various collector's editions that I have access to. We'll give ourselves the, um... Let's go with the... We, well, there's some here, but there's also, you know, one over here. A Nyx um, thingy. We got a Warhound. Don't get any of those yet. Um, 
I don't know what the difference between a heavyweight and something else is. We'll go with this one, just for the time being. You can rename them. I think it renames them for every character, because these are like the rename version of your collection. So we're going to name our steed Majima. I don't even know if anybody can see that. Maybe if they highlight the horse when you're on it. But now that I've activated that, if I push H, I whistle and I'll climb on the horse. And I'll cl I can climb off it with the H button as well. But now that we've activated that, I can do this. It causes a 20 hour wait. So you have to do, you do have to wait 20 hours between doing these. But you can get up to 60 additional carrying capacity. Which, I mean, as long as it, you're, you're going to be... You're not playing an MMO for an hour, you know? You're, you're playing it for the long haul, generally, so it's not that big of a deal. It is a little annoying how it's set up. But, you know... At least it's a little gift for yourself at the end of every day. But we are here at the storyline section. You have my word. If the counselors in Leowin are the surrounding countryside, the Ivory Brigade will find her. Not now, citizen. Can't you see I have my hands full at the moment? I'm sure a guard or one of my brigadiers can assist you. I heard you were looking for help. Brigadine Antona sent me. Why didn't you say so? Leowin's problems are legion, and now the Wood Elf Archer's predi predictions seem to be coming true. I don't know why I had trouble with that word. For some reason, seeing archers next to predictions threw me off. Damn these old Imperial secrets. Counselor Jurich has disappeared and the Ivory Brigade has already spread too thin for my liking. Tell me more about this Wood Elf Archer and the Imperial secrets. The Wood Elf, an evil sharp arrow. She brought news that Dark that the Bar Dark Brotherhood was targeting members of the Elder Council. All because of some secret of the Longhouse Emperors. We took her warning seriously, but Jurich refused Brigadine protection. You think the Dark Brotherhood harmed Counselor Jurich? With that guild of assassins, I'm not sure what to think. The church is missing, and I don't have enough brigadines at the ready to conduct a proper search. You look capable. It's okay to earn some gold and help us determine the counselor's fate. I'll find her. Here, let me update your map. These are places Jurich visits daily during her daily routine. If something befell her, it happens somewhere along this path. Meanwhile, I, ha I have Evelai Sharp Arrow checking locations in the city. She was very eager to help. What else can you tell me about her? Counselor Jurich was a member of the Imperial Elder Council back when we still had an empire. Now her title is mostly ceremonial, but she continues to assist the Legats by ser serving as an intermediary with the local nobility, the Legats. Since the collapse of the Empire and the dissolution of the Emperor Elder Council, uh, Leowen has become an independent city-state. Countess Caro sits on the throne, but the Chamber of the Legats governs the city. You have a Countess, but the Legats are still in charge. I suppose the Countess is technically the highest authority in Leowen, but she leaves the administra administration of the city to the Chamber of Legats. Leviticus, another former council elder, leads this august body along with Tebez Tebezico and Amholu. Some interesting names in Elder Scrolls, man. Tell me about the locations you marked on my map. Counselor Jurich is a creature of habit. Her daily routine is to stroll along the river and stop to read near a cave along the, across the way. While uh, Evely Sharp Arrow examines the spots the Counselor frequents in the city, you should check those locations. Tell me more about the situation here in Leowen. On paper, Countess Car uh, Countess Cara rules Leowen, but in practice, the Chamber of Legats governs the city. I think it's Legates, but for some reason, when I'm just reading it in one fell swoop, my brain wants to say Legates. I know it's Legates, though. Legates Tabazico and Amhalu and Counselor Leviticus. They handle day-to-day -day tasks. Me, I'm commander of the Ivory Brigade, Leowen's militia. 
You mentioned your soldiers were stretched too thin. Indeed. Indeed. Since the fall of the Empire, the Avery Brigade had to redouble its efforts to replace the Imperial Legion. We maintain active defenses in the north to keep the ongoing war at bay, but we have our hands full with refugees, bandits, and such. Ongoing war. The Three Banners War. Let the alliances fight over the Ruby Throne, as long as they leave us in peace. I just wish I had more soldiers to spare for this new threat that Evelai Sharp Arrow brought to our attention. You know you can just say Evelai now, it's been like three different lines mentioning her full name. Uh, she's an adventurer from Valenwood, though I get the sense she's relatively new at the job. She recently arrived with news of a threat against the former members of the Imperial Elder Council. I was skeptical at first, but now... Tell me about the threat, what did she say? She told us that the late Emperor's Emperor Lovick Stewart was murdered by the Dark Brotherhood. Apparently it pertains to some secret of the Longhouse Emperors. But those details she discussed with Councillor Leviticus. And how do the other members of the Elder Council fit in? Evil Life found a number of documents pertaining to the secret. One of these contained a list of names, the steward and some of the counselors. She assumed that since the steward had already been killed, the rest of the list might be next. Alright. So, we're gonna have to... Where's the... There's a way to look at the full Blackwood area. Uh, where is it? Locations, here we go. So, yeah, you can see little circles. So we're going to have to go to these places. I think one is fairly far. Um, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just these two. I thought there was a third one, but maybe not. Either way, we got to go do that. But we're going to go into town first. Because really we've got gear we need to break down. And, you know, it's the big city, so, you know, why not take a stroll around, get used to where we're going here. First of all, before we break stuff down... That's not an upgrade in any way, so we can ignore that. Um, what? We got heavy on the boots, and pants are medium. I mean, that's just the what we have on, but better, so swap over to that. So because these both teach training, I only need to learn it on one of them, and I can break the other one, which is very useful. Any Anytime you can break down two items instead of just one, it saves you a lot of effort later. I also want to mark off the, the little shrine looking thing on the map because that means we can fast travel back here later. Now we can join the Mages Guild and the um, War, uh, Fighters Guild. We are not going to be able to do the first quest of them until later, but um, we want to join them because they will eventually give us the ability to learn Persuade and Intimidate, which we're going to want for questing later. You don't need them, but they do give you extra options, which is nice. Which guild is for you? Calling all adventurers. Sell swords, spell slingers, and scoundrels. Do you find yourself in need of adventuring companions? Do you long for the kind of camaraderie that daring exploits make possible? Perhaps this time you joined a guild. To explore the current listing, speech to the Guild Herald Amsad. Okay. There's a couple of little side quests we can grab in here. I think most of them are just um, going to be notes on a wall. This, I believe, is joining the Mage's Guild. Welcome. Welcome. Are you here on Mage Guild business? The Mage's Guild? Yes, of course. We're lore keepers across the face of Tamriel. Guild members seek out books, tomes, and ancient scrolls in their travels. Why don't you speak with me for a moment? Perhaps you'd like to join. Let's talk about the Mage's Guild. 
Always good to speak with another knowledge seeker. Guildmaster Vanus will be pleased. What can you tell me about the Mage's Guild? We're book hunters of a sort. We seek out new information, capture it in our libraries, and make copies for distribution across Tamriel. Yield doesn't care about battlefields or boundaries, just knowledge and the acquisition of new tomes. What do I get in return? We provide training in unique spells and abilities only available to members, and from time to time projects crop up for those with some adventurous spirit. He may end up working with the Guildmaster himself. You mentioned a Guildmaster. Venice Galarian, one of the founding members of the August body, still holds a proud member of Guildmaster, overseeing every guild hall in Tamriel. He works with other ranking members, such as Tellinger the Artificer, to ensure our future success. You're not affiliated with the Eldmary Dominion. We are neutral in the war between the three alliances. When we're on guild business, we nail to no king or queen. That's why you'll see members of every race in our halls. Excellent. You are now a student of the Mage's Guild. Every book you find will now earn you a reputation in the guild. That's somewhat written wrong. So, what he means, you'll see right down here, lore books. Uh, well, Blackwood's Shalador's library books. There's going to be blue books on the map. If I go back to locations, you can't see them here. That might just be because the um, the add-on that keeps track of them can't show them. But if I go to Aradun, you might be able to. Yeah, you see like these books here. When you collect one of these, they'll have a blue highlight, so they'll stand out over a regular book that we've already seen on the ground that had like a yellow highlight. Collect those. There's a limited amount of them in each area. Well, in this case, there's 32 in Auradon. In Blackwood, there is 10, so, you know, pretty easy to keep up with there. Uh, slightly annoying that I can't see them, but um, hopefully we'll be able to find them. This will let you see every area in the game, by the way. So there's a pretty decent amount of them. Over here, and I believe you are here to set us up for the first of the Mage's Guild quest line, which we can't do until we go to one of the main towns. Greetings, I have a message for you from Velaste, mistress of Inculobana. A message for me? Indeed, she has a task for you. You'll want to speak with her as soon as you can. Where can I find her? Velaste awaits you in the guild hall at Bekelgard, along the southern coast of Aradin. Ask you a few questions? Of course, what can I tell you? Who's Velaste again? The mistress of Inculobana for the guild, a keeper of tomes. She's the guild's most accomplished lore master, second only to Guildmaster Vanus himself. Do you know what she wants? I don't, but she usually tries to offer guildmates a chance to prove themselves. As you might imagine, she's keenly interested in acquiring new books for the lore library. Maybe she's got a lead on a trove of tomes. So now that we've got that, if I go into my skills, so we have the Mage's Guild quest line that has a unique ultimate ability. And uh, some unique, um, you know, main abilities. I don't know how effective they are. I've never used them myself. But um, if you have something slotted, generally these affect that. Yeah, you know, recover about 1% for each Mage's Guild ability slotted. The main one we care about is this one. Allows you to persuade NPCs, but we need another skill point to get that. And the way you increase this level is not by normal leveling, it's by collecting those books. Now, that's one of them. The Fighter's Guild is available as well, but I forget where you have to go to get it. Oh, right here. Okay, that makes it easy. Welcome to our hall. Are you familiar with the guild? The guild? The Fighters Guild. We should consider joining uh, you should consider joining up. We have a new guild master and a new singular purpose. Why don't we talk for a moment? Excellent. 
I know you'll be a drunk. We'll all be drunk blazed together soon enough. Now what can I tell you? You mentioned a singular purpose. Right. Our guildmaster is an Argonian, sees all colors. She has us all hunting down Daedra and their damned anchors. You might have seen them. Enormous chains, plagues of Daedra boil out to lay waste to the countryside. Hard fights. What do I get in return? Huh, good, yes, good question. We train our members in special techniques, and the higher-ups are always looking for motivated members to help with special projects. You never know. He might be the next Jofnir. What happened to the old Guildmaster? Guildmaster Jofnir passed away recently, very suddenly. I always thought he'd die with a blade in his hand. But he passed away in his sleep, called to Sovngar by his ancestors. We all miss him, but Colors has proven to be a very able leader. You're not part of the Dominion military? No, we only draw blades in service to the guild. We're technically neutral in the war between the three alliances. We love the Eagle Banner and Her Majesty, of course, but every race, every creed belongs under the Guild Hall's roof. Well, let me be the first to officially welcome you as an associate of the Fighters Guild. Get out there and take the fight to the Daedra. Again, mostly just new skills. <coughs> I believe these skills are a bit more useful for certain classes than others with the Mages Guild. But again, we mostly are grabbing this for the Intimidate option. Now, I believe we'll eventually get triggered for a quest to do something. For the uh, Fighters Guild, we can't start it yet, so I guess it doesn't really matter. But we'll keep an eye out for it. And this is going to bring us to the crafting area, so first let's go talk to you. Have you seen, Have you seen the notes? notes? If, you, if see you seek companions for your adventuring, look no further. Oh, this one can help with that. Help Tell me more about guild listings. Ah, oh, of course. These listings are where other adventurers, much like yourself, can declare their interests. Those of a similar proclivity can join up together and form guilds. Take a look, this one's sure a group suited to your needs awaits you. Pretty much you can search this board, find guilds that have active... Uh, you can see what you have an active application with and browse different types of guilds. There's groups for trading, which is... they're basically just auction house groups. So you'll see um, special NPCs with guild banners on and that's just basically that guild's auction house which you can buy from them without being a member of the guild but I believe you have to be a member of the guild to sell something on there now group PvP, PvE for those who mostly just do like you know the um, dungeon and stuff role playing if you like doing role playing stuff social if you just want people to talk to that's generally what I do PvP, obvious. Uh, questing, if you're just gonna run around questing. Again, that's mostly what I do, though I'd probably join a social guild first. And crafting, if you just want, you know, master crafters and stuff like that. I'm not gonna join any of them right now, because I don't need to. Have you, had Have you had a chance to review the guild listings, friend? I'll look through them. Wonderful. This one hopes you found something that interests you. Too often this harsh world becomes isolating. Finding companions can make it bearable, hmm? Here's a little something for your time. This one is quite pleased you stop by, and hopes that you find a guild that appeals to you. Amsad wishes you many friendships and ventures in your future. Can you tell me anything more about these listings? The listings are a place for like-minded adventurers to come together. The world is quite vast, no? Many times it is difficult to find those with similar interests to your own. With this register, you need to look no further. I do like that they allow you to search for guilds without waiting to see somebody shilling them in chat. Because that stuff can be annoying. First of all, let's level up. Uh, meow, yeah, grab those. So we only got one point. Like I said, we want to get these. I'm going to go up for Persuade first next skill point we get we're gonna get this intimidating presence one gives us extra dialogue now you'll see a bunch of different stuff currently going with uh these questings these are all optional stuff we're gonna get to that but for now 
pretty much how these works is refine if you get enough of a material you can make like you can turn oak boards into wooden planks you can create stuff by selecting the weapon the type of material the type of item this in my case i need adamantite for um high elf or i have five crown mimic stones on the bank so i can um make whatever with those Deconstructs where you break something down. Improvement is you can improve an item to a different higher rank. So, you know, if you want to make a legendary weapon. And then research is how you get um, those special features, like I said. So right now we want to learn training on a bow. And that'll take six hours to learn. And each one you do takes a little bit longer. I think the next one's 12 hours, and then so on and so forth. You can occasionally get items to just automatically learn, and I'm sure you can just buy them outright. But it works the same for every piece of crafting, so if you figured out how to do one of them, you figured out how to do all of them. Um, as you get higher in the trees, you can research more than one thing at a time as well. Right, we had, is it only the axe that we have to learn stuff from? I guess so. I'm going to have the benefit of, you know, I, I'm only going to be playing this character when I'm recording. So I'm going to have time to just research stuff without it collecting more stuff. Because normally you get swamped with equipment. Like it, it's hard to dig through it all at the end of the day. Alright, so we did have one thing that could be taught and um, leave us one extra one. Yeah, here we go. But do that because it gets somewhat annoying to try to whittle these down. So you get your clothing crafting, your wood crafting, which is bows and staves, your metal crafting, which is armor and weapons, and jewelry crafting, which was added by, um, I think, the Somerset Island one. And that is intricate, so that basically means you get a bonus to your deconstructing to help you level up quicker. Unfortunately, nothing we can research there, so I don't need to worry about it. Now, this allows you to reskin yourself so you can give yourself different colors. Some of these are going to be unlocked because I've completed them in all the characters. But for the sake of a necromancer, I assume we're going to want to do something mostly on the dark side. Where's a nice, there we go, Soul Shriven Gray. That looks vaguely, you know, necromancery, I suppose. I think this is free to just do whenever you want. I did see there was another quest over here, which I'm assuming, yeah, it's an urgent task for you. Well met, comrade. I have an urgent message from the Guildmaster. What's the message? Report to me at once. I have a task for you. She's a lizard of few words. She's running things out of the guild hall on Veckel Guard at the moment. The eight guide you, comrade. Did you say what she wanted? No, but I have an idea. Word is the hall is that there's a big contract, a huge contract. All hands on deck. She probably wants you in the fight. Damn. Because of my mods, these are daily crafting writs, so you'll be tasked with making X amount of things for each tree. And you can turn them in for extra experience and some extra items. This is the um, consumables, I think is like cooking, alchemy, enchanting, and this is your uh, blacksmithing, wood crafting, and clothing, or tailoring, I guess. 
But I believe you cannot do those writs until you do these. I could be mistaken. You notice a prominent handbell on the requisition board. The crafters of Leywinds bid you welcome. Masters of the craft await you in Leywin. New crafters shall be trained. Accomplished crafters will be certified. All at no cost to you. Unskilled crafters will be certified after a brief training. Skilled crafters will be cra certified immediately. The master shall charge no fee for certification. Certification is mandatory to fulfill crafting writs. Interesting parties should seek out Millenth or uh, Millenth for blacksmith, clothier, and woodworker certification. Speak with Daniel T Teleno for provisioner, enchanter, and alchemist certification. So basically, you sort of get run through e how each one works, which is pretty repetitive, all things considered. She's going to send you out to get wood, and then you're going to refine the wood. Then you're going to uh, make something out of the wood. Then you're going to break it down. And only then are you certified. And then you go to blacksmithing and do the same thing, and so on and so forth. I forget how high you have to be for her to be like, you know what, you know enough, you're just certified. But I, I think it's at least a couple of levels in. But you can't do writs until you do these, and it's free experience, so why not? You here for crafting certification. Don't worry, there's no cost involved. Your alliance covers all my fees. Once you're certified, they'll let you fulfill the crafting writs. Everyone wins. Yeah, I saw the notice. How do the crafting writs work? They're daily requests for crafted goods, but they're only available to certified crafters. If you can show me you know your craft, I'll get you certified. Alright, tell me how this works. I can train and certify blacksmiths, clothiers, and woodworking, so if that sounds like something you want, we can get started. Who else can certify me? Have you spoken with Daniel Teleno? He handles certification and training for provisioning, enchanting, and alchemy. He's a bit stuffy, but he knows what he's doing. Tell me more about the crafts you certify. Of course. Of course. What do you want to know? What can a blacksmith make? Anything with metal in it, and I don't mean horseshoes and calipers. The crafting writs are for weapons and heavy armor, so that's what I teach. What does a woodworker make? Bows, shields, and magical staves. Staffs? No, it's staves. I always forget how to say that. What do clothiers make? Cloth and leather goods. The crafting writ want pieces of light cloth armor or medium armor. That's what I certify. Alright. Excellent. We can get started whenever you're ready. Let me know if you have some time. Let's start with blacksmith, I suppose. You know your if you know a way around a forge, I'll certify you, but you have to commit. I can only train one discipline at a time. I want you to craft a simple iron dagger. First you mine some iron ore, then you refine the ore into iron ingots. You'll use those ingots and make the dagger. You'll certify me if I make an iron dagger. Yes. You have to prove you know your way around a blacksmithing station. Those are the rules. For now, bring me an armload of iron ore. Once you're back, You'll refine them into iron ingots. Where can I find the ore? There's a place outside of town which should still have some iron ore veins. Head there and mine it yourself. Bring me ten solid chunks of iron ore. If those veins are planned out, you'll need to find iron ore on your own. I'll return with the ore. So basically, we leave the town, and there'll be a special spot. Seeking Tenant. I'm surprised I can get that. I figured, since I, I think I already have the house on a different character, but I'll grab it. Seeking Tenant. Are you an adventurer of good reputation? Have low to moderate homicidal tendencies? Looking for a cozy home to call your own, but too low on funds to afford one? How would you like a free in-room? That's right. Completely free. No catch. Just seek out Philande de Mari at your local inn for more information about this exciting ownership opportunity. But yeah, basically, we leave the area. We run over to where it's highlighted on the map that we can find these um, ore veins. Mine those, come back, turn those into iron bars, and then talk to her again. She'll tell me to make the dagger. Make the dagger, talk to her again. She'll tell me to break the dagger. Break the dagger, talk to her again. It's very repetitive, but you have to do them for the writs, and the writs are worthwhile just for 
the sheer amount of experience you can get from them. And it's the best way of leveling your stuff. But first we'll take care of this. Because I think all we have to do is talk to her. Now oh, there's another quest in here I want to grab anyway, so that works out. Alright, so here you see that if you're... Stuff that's inside of towns is considered stealing in certain locations. Which, if you're not caught doing it, it's a good way to build up money. The Happy Averno Shipping Company, Temporary Headquarters, Eludus and Scorpion Averno, Proprietors, No Soliciting. Now we'll talk to you guys first. We simply must do something about the business, brother. These chambers are much too small for a lifestyle. I realize that, Skypion. But the fang frills have us by the throat. What am I to do? Well now, Skypion can say what he wants about the city, but you don't have strapping, smoldering-eyed strangers walk into your suites in Shadenhall. Alas, were I only in the mood for some distraction, damnable fang furls. Fang furls? What's that? With the Empire gone, the fang furls gang controls all trade in Blackwood. They're run by Pungent Adder. Every fifth coin in the region ends up in his coffers. This makes business difficult for my brother and I. Perhaps we could enlist your help. What can be done to stop them? If we, had one of their if we had one of their business ledgers, I'd have an understanding of the Fang Furl's operation. Perhaps even find a weakness ripe for exploiting. If you could procure one of these ledgers for us, my brother and I would pay you handsomely. I'll help get one of the ledgers. If you get us a ledger, I'm certain we can put it to good use. Rumor has that the Fang Furls have a bookkeeper, Lavrar Droth, who lives in town. I'd wager you could find a ledger in his home. Just around the corner, across from the bridge. Why well, don't you tell me about this bookkeeper? I know his name is Lerard Droth, but the Fang Frills make him lead a quiet life. To conceal his identity, I imagined. But all the muscle on the payroll visits him for late night liaisons. Very clandestine, the whole thing, but not to my keen eyes. What information do you think I'll find in this ledger? You can learn a great deal from a business ledger, where the money comes from, where it goes, and then all you need to do is apply a little pressure at a weak point. I don't know exactly what we'll find, but I do know whatever it is, I can exploit it. What's the Happy Averno Shipping Company? The Happy Averno Shipping Company was gifted to my brother and I by our dear departed uncle. Formerly, it was one of Blackwell's main trade enterprises. We thought with a little elbow grease it might prove a profitable venture. Where'd it go wrong? We discovered our uncle's affairs were more precariously poised than described for one. Many of his charters and contracts were voided by the Three Banners War. The Fang Furls did the rest. They came for everything that they could steal. Alright. Well, that leads that on. I should probably check these bookshelves just in case there is a skill book in them. Because they just pop up randomly that I've noticed. I'll talk to you to get our free home. You have a look about you, some sort of quality that's rare to find. And trust me, I'm never wrong about these sort of things. Can I interest you in a room at the local inn? Actually, wait, that came out wrong. A room at the local inn? Look, empty rooms are just bad for business. The upkeep alone costs me more than the place is worth. But I think we can come to a sort of arrangement. And not the sort of arrangement that involves a few drinks, let me be clear about that. What sort of arrangement? I need someone to improve the reputation of my property. It's a hero type who people look up to. And I have a feeling about you. You've done something great, and are probably on the way to do something greater. Seems like we can help each other out here. I'm interested. What are the details? Yeah, all right, details. I can see how this might be a bit sketchy, but don't worry. The inn room is well kept, conveniently located. I know you adventuring types wanting a home in every town. This would be a nice addition to your holdings. There has to be a catch. What is it? No catch. I just need someone to freshen up my image. And my gut tells me you're the one to do that. As long as you're not planning on turning into a scuba den or an outlaw's refuge, the room's all yours. 
So within legal reason, I can do whatever I want with the place. Oh sure. You can set up some crafting stations, house your pets, display any treasures or trophies you come upon in your adventures. Hey, you can even set up a target dummy to practice combat. Just don't demolish the place when we're good. Alright, I accept your offer. Excellent. You won't regret this decision, I swear. Here's the deed and the key to the room. It took me a while, but I was finally able to take them back from the last tenant. Required more time in the sewers than I had hoped for, but hey, that's business. Hope the room is to your liking. With your reputation, I'm sure you shouldn't have any trouble with the neighbors. If you do, remember death threats are not the way to go. Had a spot of trouble if the last tenant started sending those out. Anything else I should keep in mind. Nope, just make yourself at home. Spruce things up a bit. Honestly, I can't wait to see how you arrange the place. Hopefully you'll end up with a few less Daedric Shrines than another former tenant of mine, like Zero. Zero's a good number. I mean, would a necromancer worship the Daedra? I suppose, in a way. I think there's at least one that sort of rely upon on bringing things back from the dead. I forget which one it is, though. Of course, I totally don't worship the Daedra. Oh, what a relief. I can't tell you how it is to wash bloodstains off the cobble floors. But that's not even the worst of it. I've had tenants cram their rooms with the wildest things. Mounts, foliage, assistance, I mean, it's an in-room. Do you own the place? I own this and several other pro pro uh, properties throughout Tamriel. It pays to diversify. Of course, that means I've got to look out for a variety of troubles too. But hey, no one ever said the real estate business was easy. Alright, so that unlocks the housing for this area. Now, this is more or less just a list of the free places you can go and some other housing places. Just telling you various things that you can buy. You don't need it. I don't even know if there's any point to keeping this. I don't know why it doesn't just vanish and go into your lore library after you read it the first time. Because it does, I'm pretty sure. Now if I go into journal... I'm just getting rid of the uh, little look at me signs. Well, maybe not. Could have sworn there, like you could um, look that up after that. It doesn't really matter. It's not really that important of information. But yeah, once you have this, you can climb on in. The free houses are not much to get too excited about. I think this one's bigger than most. Some of them are just damn near microscopic. And because I've uh, already put stuff down on another character, you can see sort of see how this works. Like if I push F5, I get a grid, I can move stuff around, I can put stuff away. You can put down pets if you want. I didn't realize how big this was when I first grabbed it. How do I put it away? Put away R. There we go. I don't remember what this is offhand. I haven't put down this though. This is a storage container, so you can put stuff in it. I believe it's a way to transfer stuff from one character to another, but you can also already do that. But I can't put this in the armor, craft the other thing down at the same time. That's kind of annoying. What is this thing, anyway? Okay, this is just a thingy to have uh, build setups if you're going to have multiple builds. I'm not going to, so you know what? I'm going to just put this away for now. Because I would very much prefer to have that um, storage coffer. Hmm. 
There we go. Pop that on top of that. Now let's move you over here. Okay, I can't put down the... I have a bed on another house, but I guess uh, only certain stuff works on all of them. So, you know, you can hang out here and protect the chest. But yeah, you know, it's not a huge house. It's like a, basically a studio of an apartment. And even that's kind of stretching it. It's more like a bedroom. But I mean... For free housing, uh, it's, it could be worse. Oh, that's like hovering over it. I want it to be like down more. Close enough. Okay, that'll work. But yeah, this is like... You have only 30 slots, but you can put whatever inside, and I think, like, if I went into this house that is a different character, the stuff in it would still be there. So it kind of just works as 30 extra bank slots. But I have a couple of the free houses just from going to different places as different characters. So if I go into this and go to this one... I've got um, the Morrowind one. I've got this one, obviously. Um, this is Velcro Guard, Solitude in um, Skyrim, and Ebonheart. Which I don't... I mean, I would assume that's Morrowind adjacent, because I believe Ebonheart is a city there, but I don't remember exactly where that is. But you can teleport to any house at any time, I believe, once you've unlocked them. And I guess that'll wrap us up for today. Um, next time, we're going to start um, doing the quest we've unlocked, obviously. But I'm also going to go into the um, stealing function and introducing you to the illegal side of Elder Scrolls Online. Um, because it's very repetitive, I'm probably going to do the crafting certification quests off-camera. They're all the same. Um, I mean, there's slight deviations in the non-equipment um, crafting one. But even they're pretty similar, you know, for enchanting. Go get these runes, come back, combine them, break it, you know. Go get these alchemy ingredients, make a potion. Go get this recipe to teach you how to cook, um, I think it's um, roast pork. Go get a piece of pork, come back, cook it. You're not missing much. There's no real plot relevance. There's no storyline. It's just sort of running you through the motions of how to do everything. In case you were only sticking with one crafting thing. But since you can do all of them, why? <laughs> why not just get unlock them all and get the ability to do all of them? So I'm going to leave you here. And um, we'll see you next week where we will start stealing stuff and uh, see how that works out. Until then, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you next week.